Hey, I'm Doug Fortin, and you're watching Dirt Life. Hey, welcome back to Dirt Live. Special guest, Justin Davis. Thanks for having me, George. Glad to be here. Well, you're the man, man. Let's talk about, everybody talked about you a few years ago, the youngest driver to ever win Class 1 and the Baja Championship at the age of 17? Yep, 17. Uh, you know, there was a lot of luck, too. I mean, it wasn't just a big team effort, and uh, just everything was coming together. We started the season with 20 miles on a brand new car, and uh, just kind of went with it, came out coming off a score light win. So uh, we had some motive going in, and we just wanted to push away into class one, knowing that we could uh, we could run with these guys. We beat, we were top 10 overall in a 12 car when we finished the 1,000 the year before. So uh, we just came in and uh, just started clicking off miles, and we won Laughlin, we won San Felipe, and then uh, second at the 500. And then we came in the 1,000, we took uh, just a rear start. We were just going to push through the pack. Knowing that we didn't have to win, we just had to finish for the championship. But uh, things came together, and halfway through the race, saw the top leaders falling out and just kind of cruised into the finish. And, uh, you know, there goes Baja, another story of how many things we missed and could have been that, but uh, just everything came together and ended up first. We started 27th and finished first car across the line. So, I mean, it was a dream come true for all of us, and you know, it was a big team effort. Now, did you have... You know, I know you started out the first of the year at Laughlin, did great, came back at San Felipe. You talked about the 500. You were so close to win the 500. I mean, how is how crazy was that? Uh, it was a little disheartening because uh, the year before we lost the same guy in Class 12. So uh, it was just kind of a miscommunication. We had the guy watching the tracker, and uh, we were first physical car, but uh, Eugenio in 122 was in the back, and we didn't. I didn't know and. Uh, no one got on the radio and told me just because it was a little late, so they didn't want to, you know, make a mistake and cost the championship. So uh, I never knew he was there. We finished the line, and uh, we got beat by one minute. So, you know, it was a little disappointing. So that's why when we came into 1,000, uh, I wasn't going to – we started last so that we didn't have that problem. Now, I mean, starting last, I mean, nobody wants to start last. You always want to be out front. What was it like? I mean, people are watching out there, and uh, how incredible – to start last physically, you were the first guy at the finish. Yeah, you know, but we were we did it the year before in class 12. So uh, I mean, it's a thousand miles. We got a long way to go, and doing it by yourself, you know, just pacing it, no big hurry. The guys, you know, half the field is going to drop off within the first couple hundred miles. So uh, we just took our time and just picking them off one at a time. I think uh, by Ojos we were top 10. So uh, we were just cruising along, and people were making mistakes, and those mistakes were costing them races, and. Uh, we were just moving, slowly moving forward, and by uh, Borrego, the second loop we came through, we were a first physical car. So, uh, you know, things can happen in Baja, and you just never know what's going to happen. Now, whose idea was it to start last? My dad. He's, he's the guy that takes care of all the logistics and all that stuff. So, uh, you know, he took the year before, he picked the same thing. So uh, we were just going to go with it, and uh, it worked. So uh, it just keeps everything kind of pacing it, and then you know every car you go by, you're beating him physically. So you don't have to worry about that guy sneaking up like it happened to the 500. So we just wanted to make sure we knew where exactly where we were at all times. Now, you know, you went from score, you know, lights to class one. That's a big jump, you know, a lot of horsepower. Yeah, well, we went from, you know, 100, 100 horsepower to, you know, 800. So uh, it's a lot in those one cars. You know, it was a good time, great learning experience for, you know, it just – it's a lot, a lot of work to keep those cars all in, together. It's not like your normal beam car now where a couple of weeks you have that thing prepped and ready. So, uh, you know, since doing it, just me and another guy prepping the car, so it's a lot of work. But, uh, you know, it uh, pays off in the end when you do it all by yourself and uh, you drive the whole thing. So, you know, you don't have to rely on that person. You know, you give him in the lead and then he gets in and screws up. So uh, it's a little, it's easier when you're all by yourself because, you know, if you screw up or the car breaks, it's your fault. So uh, it just makes it a little bit easier. Yeah, I, I, I got a question here, man. I mean, you were 18. I mean, how many 18-year-olds are out there doing this kind of racing in a Class 1, 800 horsepower, and the transition from, you know, the different car? What, what really made you – I mean, you went, bam, right to the front. Yeah, you know, uh, but, it, I mean, I was, I'm still young, but even younger then, and uh, just kind of a little wild man, just get in it and go for it. You know, the car didn't even work that great the first race. It was overheating. I mean, all these things against us that should have never even happened. I mean, the car was 
Like water was like almost 300 degrees boiling. But you know what? We got on the radio. I'm like, what do you want to do, Dad? And uh, we just kept in and went for it and uh, paid off. I mean, we beat some of these guys that have been racing 10 years in class one that never done it. Like, you know, Lettner and all them guys, are, they're great competitors. But uh, we went Laughlin, and we just coming off the short course stuff. So Laughlin's kind of what I like to do. And we just put a pedal to the metal and <laughs> hope for the best and uh, worked out. Well, you know, you won Laughlin, and you come back, win San Felipe. Uh, come up a little short, you know. Did that set you back at all? You thinking, well, we, we could have had a perfect year. Yeah, and uh, we, it cost us the overall championship by uh, one position. So, I mean, we almost had win all the races and overall title, which, I mean, everybody wants to do, and it's not easy to come by. It's a lot of work. So, uh, yeah, but, I mean, when we went in the 1,000, we knew we wanted to – we wanted to be the ones to beat, and uh, I know I think uh, everybody knew we were a tough competitor. Knowing that season, how good of when it's your year, man, it's your year. There's not a lot that you can do about it, but uh, you know we just were motivated. Now, how do you feel? Um, I read a newspaper in Ensenada, the front page. You were on the front page of El Rey. How, what did we the newspaper That's, article? Well, how, what did that make you feel like on the front page of the Ensenada newspaper? Oh, it's that pretty. You were in town. It's pretty big. I mean. To be known for, you know, there's people like Robbie Gordon, all them that get that. To be up there with those kind of guys is, is an amazing feeling. And then you also get like, man, I don't really want to let them down, you know, have some problems and not to try to compete with the year we had before. Is, that one's tough to beat. But, uh, you know, it just kind of gives a little bit more motivation knowing that when we show up that we're a, a competitor and people know that. Now, the radio, we talked, you know, your dad on the radio, is that sometimes good and bad? Yeah, he's he's pretty much banned from all radios since he tends to get on there and scream and like the last race he uh at the drag race uh kind of jumped the start a little bit and got ahead of Roger and then I got my dad screaming in my ear that you know go dump inside but I can't hear him all I just hear is screaming because my co-driver is he's yelling at me you know get inside so it was just a cluster and came in on the inside and he doored me and that kind of set us back for the race but uh, that's another reason why my dad's not allowed on the radio so but it's all good fun you know he's he's put a lot of time and money into this so you know I, le I let him slip once in a while get on the radio but it's all fun it's all good yeah so you know who's your, your hero who's your biggest hero uh, my dad I mean he's the one that got us all into this you know he was the motorcycle guy and went into cars but uh, he wanted to keep all of us kids out of the bikes because you don't want to get us hurt and all that and so uh, we were fortunate to have the money to race the cars but uh, he I mean he was overall champion in 96 and Andrew Way in class 10 and uh, he's won everything on a motorcycle so uh, you know he he taught me a lot of the stuff to be patient and uh, you know you're not gonna be the first guy to win the race by at a mile marker 100 so just you got to pace yourself and uh, he's taught me everything I mean I remember driving in a 600 car at 13 so uh, he's gave me the opportunity to do what I love to do you know, that, that was a question that was coming up later about your dad. Uh, you kind of just answered that. But let's talk a little bit about your dad. So, you know, started out racing. I know he was a young kid in Vegas, and he started out six years old, 13 years old. He's a champion in the mini bikes, and then he be, became the score champion at Riverside on motorcycles in Class 22. And then he decided to start a business and left the motorcycles because he – I know he was an ABC Wild of Sports deal and he broke his leg and decided to start a business. Is that something that you think about maybe going into the business more than racing or what? Yeah, I mean, right now I'm working in the race shop full time and it's a lot of fun with all the guys kind of hanging out, doing what I love to do. But, uh, you know, I got to also see what my future is and going into business with him. You know, he's got a lot of stuff going, but, uh, you know, right now he's giving me the opportunity to do what I love. So, uh, you know, just kind of savoring the moment right now. You know, we got the trophy truck and uh, working my tail off to, you know, make sure that we're going to try to go for the championship right now. So, uh, you know, he's he's been a great uh, great for me, and uh, I just hope I can make him proud and do what I love to do. Well, well let's let's talk about 2013. What's your overall plan for two? We know you're doing. You're going for. The, let's talk about it. We're going for the you know the Hydra Score World Championship. You know. We go to every race to win. You know, we don't we don't want to go for second and all that. But I mean, you got to do for your points and your championship. But we set our minds every race. You know, there's BJ and all them guys, but we know we can run with them. Uh, last race we set fastest lap, so uh, we know what we got to take. So we just you know we might be a younger trophy truck team, but we'll work twice as hard as whatever we got to do to get this thing going. And uh, I think we got the the crew guys to do it. I know I got a great crew chief, 
and uh, I think we're going to give a good run for its money. Well, let's talk about you've ridden solo, basically. It's not solo. you got a co-driver. Yeah. But you've never had anybody in there in the class one, so you won the championship by yourself with your co-driver. So now you're being joined. Let's talk about you're doing this with a partner now. you got one of the best in the world. Yeah, we got Kyle Duke, the Pro 4 world champion from uh, Lucas Oil. So uh, he's got a short course background, which we have a little bit, but not as much as him. And, uh, you know, we want to mix it up a little bit, have a more, I mean, I'm a desert guy, you know, being consistent and all that. And he's kind of the bit of the wild man. But uh, I think he brought some sponsors on, like Toyo on that. So, uh, you know, we paid it. And he's helping us set the truck up because uh, he knows a little bit more about trucks since he's been around a little bit longer. We're more of the buggy guys. So, uh, but uh, he's helping us a lot. And uh, when he was in the truck at the last race, he set fast his lap. So I know what he's got to take. We just got to calm him down a little bit. He's a little bit of gets excited. But, uh, you know, he's done a great job. And uh, we're happy to have him on the team. And uh, we're looking forward to this season. Now, do you like the loop race, like the thousand, or do you like what you just did um, in La Paz, going to La Paz? Do you like the, the long peninsula or the loop? Uh, they're both. I mean, they're both great. The loop tends to when it used to be with Scal with the San Felipe side, just wasn't that fun, and the one cars and that. The Trover trucks, it's not as big a deal, but uh, the peninsula runs a little bit, a little bit different. You know, a lot of more fast roads, which I kind of like to you know, slide and back in the truck in at a hundred and hanging it out a little bit, which is. A little bit more fun than I think just going around, you know, San Felipe doing the same old whoops, straight line, and uh, kind of gets a little old after a while beating yourself up. But uh, they're both great. Everything's great about Baja. You know, it's not like here. It's not like we get all the crowds in Baja where they're cheering you on. And there's 10,000 people when you take off, and they're all, they got their signs, and it's just a whole different experience down there. Well, we've asked Johnny, everybody, tacos. You got taco places down there? I yep. know your dad does. We get a few down there. I think we, we tend to eat it like the one in Valley of Tea. I forgot the name, but like I think at the 500 weight, they're like seven days in a row. So, uh, you know, tacos are great down there, and uh, just everything's great about Baja. The way they just embrace off-road racing, I mean, it's like a national holiday down there. So uh, the food's awesome. You know, we just love hanging out down there. Well, you know, I want to thank you for coming on the show. I mean, the people get a chance to see this young driver. And keep an eye on him, folks, 2013. This could be your world champion, Justin Davis. Well, we got some photos coming up next. Here's our third photo. And uh, you can see this, Kristen Vasquez. You, have you ever done that, Justin? Yeah, a few times. Okay, that's kind of a wild shot. Thank you for that photo. We'll be right back after this commercial. We'll be joined by Roger Norman, live. <laughs>